everybody, my name is Carmen Shank. I'm the Tiny House Foodie. It's January the 18th, and we're continuing the Right Size Your Kitchen video series. Today, we are talking about food storage. Now, if food storage in your house looks something like this, you might find this a little surprising. Um, we found that there are some health risks associated with the use of plastic. And there's also a real environmental problem with plastic as well. So we have gotten rid of all of these sorts of things. Now they do, <laughs> they do migrate here sometimes when people give us leftovers in plastic, but that doesn't mean they have to live at my house. They don't. <laughs> so let me show you some alternatives, some other ways to approach uh, keeping a little something in the fridge that you don't want to throw away or you know, you've opened something and you want to keep it for a little longer. So say you have a little bit of something in the bowl, you can place another bowl upside down on top. It's actually sealed in there and stick it in the fridge and you're fine. I also have, you know, if you weren't able to finish all of lunch, just place another bowl or place a little saucer up on top. Or if you're really feeling brave and it, it needs a little more space in there, put the saucer upside down. Now. Now, if you already know if you've gone through this process that we don't keep that many bowls and plates and stuff like that around, so that forces us to eat it. <laughs> if there's a leftover that goes in the fridge and we need the bowl, then we need to eat the eat whatever it is that's in the bowl. <laughs> so all that to say is that leftovers don't actually go in the fridge to be forgotten and discovered again when they've got little felty pads on them. So. We've actually found this forces us to keep the rotation much fresher because we're not using plastic. It's actually in a bowl <laughs> with another plate on top or something like that. It's also very uh, useful to have a small collection of these lids around. Uh, you've seen me do this before. If you've watched many of these, they seal quite nicely, but it's also the easiest thing in the world to take them right back off. So we keep a large size if you've uh, seen some of the videos of the kitchen here, you know that I have two in the large size and um, two in the medium size and two <laughs> of this size and then the little one, which we ended up using more than I thought. If you open something that you've canned and you want to seal the rest of it to put in the fridge and hold for a little longer, this works out really well for those and a cup of something or um, just you know, little things, these little guys are very helpful. So what this does for me, and it keeps me from using single use plastic. So yeah, this is plastic, it's silicone, but it doesn't usually touch the food. And secondly, I can use them over and over and over again. It's not a single use plastic. So that is something that I appreciate. Plus, <laughs> they're just awfully cute. <laughs> Who wouldn't love to have something like this on top of, of a uh, of something you're, that's going to stick around for a while. So I would encourage you to put all of your plastics in the donate box. I know it's going to shake your world up a little bit. It's going to leave you with a whole empty cabinet, which is so fantastic. And it's going to encourage you by default to get a little more creative with food storage. And you can do that. That is something you absolutely can do. I will be completely honest with you and say, I don't miss it. I do not miss the plastic. I don't, I really honestly don't. Now the things that used to be in plastic, let me show you some of the, the alternatives. Now I keep, I keep some canning jars handy because we use a lot of them. And in my kitchen, um, let me show you some of the other things that I do with canning jars. So things in my house that used to be stored in plastic are now stored in glass. For example, sugar, flour, um, Dutch cocoa, laundry detergent, uh, soda ash fixer. These are things that I have always stored in plastic, but it works really well to store them in glass instead. Now there's various sizes, of course, and so the sugar works out really well in this big gallon size. And, you know, other baking supplies and snack kinds of things and tea uh, work out really well in the, in the quart jars. 
You can label them with a Sharpie marker, which is really simple. And it's easy to get the label back off. You just wipe it off with a cloth when you're finished with it. Now, um, in terms of weird things like this, <laughs> this is one of those strange containers. It's plastic and it's metal and it's cardboard. So it's, it's just a difficult thing to recycle. So we buy it at the bulk food store in plastic. Of course, the bag is recyclable and keep it in glass. So again, label it with a Sharpie marker and it, it wipes off when you're finished with it. So in our house, things that used to be, including leftovers, things that used to be stored in plastic, I now store in glass. That is the best and the safest way to store food. And even though it is heavier for tiny house folks who move a lot, um, it's, I actually will take them off and put them in a, um, well, in the tiny house. I'll take them out and put them in the laundry basket and put um, cloth dish towels between them to keep them from uh, crashing into each other. I sometimes fill the sink with cloth and jars. And so you can actually move the house from place to place. Um, without that being an issue, without the jars breaking being an issue. I also will take heavy things like these and put them in a box and put them in the car that is moved separately from the house. So that is another way to handle things that are a little heavier if you're in a house situation where your house is on wheels and you're moving around a lot. So again, keep things in glass. It's the safest, best way to keep things um, in terms of your health. Plastic is an environmental issue and also has health concerns, so avoid storing food in plastic. Also avoid these weird um, containers where it's difficult to recycle them um, because they're made of all kinds of weird stuff. <laughs> avoid stuff like that, and if you've got a bulk food shop where you are, it's a really great place. Now, some of them will allow you to bring your own containers, and that's ideal. Um, you can actually walk in with your jar and just fill with what you need and work out the price with them. Um, and it's, it's another way to be uh, conscious of the environment and to be health conscious because plastic has health issues as well as environmental ones. So food storage, as you tackle your cabinet today, keep in mind that it's a good idea to recycle that plastic donate what you no longer use, and start to try some other things. Try some new storage solutions and see how it works for you. You may find that some of those things are worth the little bit of extra effort that you make today. So I'm Carmen Shank, the Tiny House Foodie, reminding you that we can go tiny, we can embrace the simplicity, and we can eat really well. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.